Hi, so now that we've heard from Sophia's perspective about the whole thing, I'm going to break it down because um, there's a lot of details um, that <laughs> happened through this whole process. Um, so basically, where I left off was we got to Iowa and um, yeah, so like Sophia was saying, Sophia John was invited to um, our show at People's in Iowa. So Iowa became the target market for us um, because we started getting response uh, from uh, the record stores that we were we were selling um, the CD, the EP on consignment at record stores in Iowa, and they seemed to be moving and. Um, and then kids, a lot of kids started coming to the show. So we started getting a, it was a, a good response in Iowa. It, our triangle was Iowa. It was like Iowa, Idaho, and like Michigan was like the, the second triangulation market that we picked. And Iowa was doing the best. So we decided to keep hitting back Iowa over and over again. And, um... So we invited Sophia John to our people show. She absolutely did not want to come. Um, you know, girl in pigtails, <laughs> just like she's a rock chick, you know, she is not interested. Um, she was basically just forced to come see that show. And um, like she said, she was blown away. And it was instrumental because Sophia, um, what she didn't say about herself was that the labels considered her station what they call a tastemaker station. A tastemaker station is where um, stations can play um, new artists but not report them to the, the BDS report that the whole, all the radio stations in the country get the same report. It's called BDS. So if you don't report it, but you play it just to see if there's any kind of reaction from the listeners. And that's why they call it a tastemaker station. She was a tastemaker station. And um, so, so she was very visible to all the labels uh, all over the place. She was very visible herself. And when she decided to play Red, um, God, she loved that single so much. And when she decided to play it on her station, I don't think that she realized um, just what big of a response that it was going to get. Because, like, literally overnight, it just blew up. I mean, she said... Her phones were ringing, the request lines were ringing, like off the hook for Red, Sister Soleil, Red. And so you go from light rotation to medium rotation to heavy rotation in radio and depending upon how it's reacting. Well, we went from light rotation straight into heavy rotation because it happened so fast. It happened so fast that... Um, the market in Des Moines, Iowa just exploded and we had to keep running and it was about a five to six hour drive each way and we had to keep going back like almost every single week to restock the stores, restock the stores and play show after show and, and, and you know, um, she reported it, which was, that was the biggest thing that she did. She reported to BDS that she was playing red and in heavy rotation, which then signaled to all the other radio stations in the country that they should be playing it too. And literally like one by one, San Francisco started playing it and then LA started playing it. And the hardest station to get us to play was our hometown station, Q101, would not touch us with a 10-foot pole and um, until Sophia broke it in Des Moines, 
San Francisco broke it, LA broke it, and finally Q101 was the third biggest market in the entire country. It was the third biggest radio station in the whole country, and they added it. And then it exploded to a whole new level of chaos, <laughs> of complete and utter frenzy. And yeah, frenzy is the word. <laughs>